You're listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Mike Luke. All right, joined by Jason Shear. We have a new little intro right there. What did you think about that one there, Shear? Very impressive. Very, Very impressive. We're going to talk about Jacob Franklin later on in the show. Shear can only be with us for about 30 minutes or so. And this is a hard deadline as well, not the other deadlines where I just shoot past it and <laughs> pretend that I didn't know what you needed there, Shear. Yeah, we got a little medical stuff with the family, so we got a, we got a half hour. All right. I was going to say, so sure, you're finally getting that Bosley treatment? Uh, Yeah, you know. <laughs> That'd be yeah. awesome. You come on with like a full head of hair. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> All right. We're going to, we got a lot to get through. Obviously, Arizona basketball, Arizona football. But first, I think a lot of people out there owe a little bit of an apology to the Tommy gun, including maybe us to a certain degree, because I never understood the philosophy of only recruiting one player in each class, essentially, because when you miss on that, then you're in a lot of trouble. But since Andrew Nemhart, let's look at what you've uh, been able to do. You've been able to get, uh, or is Andrew Nemhart? Oh, gosh. It's Andrew Nemhart, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me start that one over. Basically, since since Nemhart, Tommy Lloyd has killed it on the recruiting uh, circa. He's got uh, Jaden Bradley, Keyshaw Johnson, Carter Bryant, Jamari Phillips, Emmanuel Steven. I can keep going. He has done a ton right there. And I think, quite frankly, he's probably silenced a lot of the critics that didn't think that he knew what he was doing when it came to recruiting there, Sheer. Yeah, it's Ryan Nemhart, by the way. But uh, <laughs> Andrew's the one on the Pacers. Um, yeah, I mean, look, he... he a lot of times with recruiting, coaches know a lot better than we do. Maybe not in the evaluation sense all the time, but in how they want their roster to be constructed in the ins and out of it. And, um, you know, Tommy Lloyd, I, I don't know how much he's adjusted as much as I know that he's just he's had success. Like they've evaluated guys. They picked guys like Emmanuel Steven was was their big man in 2024. That was their guy. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but right now he's, he's having a lot of success in, in the way that he approaches things. And like you said, I mean, he is on a hot streak. I mean, these are big time players that we're talking about that he's brought in right here. Again, Caleb Love, Jaden Bradley, Keyshawn Johnson, Jamari Phillips, Carter Bryant, Emmanuel Steven. There's going to be other players that are coming in here as well. These are big time difference maker type players here. These aren't just kind of fill in the scene type guys. And again, I think you got to give a lot of kudos to the guy because he clearly stuck to a plan and knew what he was doing. And I think you hit the, the nail on the head now is times have changed where you have to consider the transfer portal part of the class. You can't just look at the high school class and say like, okay, that's it. Because that's just not reality anymore with football or basketball. And so you look at how he's recovered and you made a good point. We have to include Caleb Love. We have to include Jaden Bradley. Um, and, and you know, that that's not... Those aren't easy recruitments. Like, there's multiple other schools that wanted those guys. Emmanuel Steven had offer from Kansas, from, right. you know, Michigan. Right? Like, Arizona's beating out legitimate schools for these guys. And, and um, you know, that's something where there was a point when Arizona lost an Hard where people were like, is Tommy going to be able to recruit against these big schools? I can't believe we got beat, blah, blah, blah. Arizona went head-to-head -head with Kansas and beat Kansas in recruitment. That's, that's something that we should appreciate. That is more than something we should appreciate. And Emmanuel Steven, let's not get this one twisted, is that exact kind of Kansas-type big man right there. Comes in, sits there for a year, becomes a monster, and by the time he's a junior, he's an All-American. So you go head-to-head -head with Kansas for some of these guys, it's some pretty impressive stuff right there. Um, now, as far as the 2024 class goes, you've got two players that I think have good chances of becoming McDonald's All-Americans and Jamari Phillips and Carter Bryant. Um, Emmanuel Steven, not quite on that level, but I also think now you're going to find, uh, you're going to probably have the mystery Euro, which we should always just have basically as a, uh, you know, as kind of a default, you're gonna have the mystery Euro. And then you're also going to have some grant. You're going to have some transfers in here. That's just going to be part of the game right here. Yeah. I would say the domestic class high school class is done. I, I don't see zoom Diallo coming to Arizona. Uh, it wouldn't be shocking if he did, but I, I don't see it. So then you go to the international. I, I would guarantee you there's international guys that even I don't right. know about that will eventually pop up. Um, and, and then the, the transfer route. I mean, there's going to be guys. That, and I think part of it with Arizona is, you know, we've mentioned it before. We just don't know who's going to go pro. Like, because theoretically, all these guys could come back. And then all of a sudden, 
you're only taking a three-man class because that's all you have room for. So Arizona will be keeping um, international guys warm, and then you could always wait for the transfer portal after the season and all that. But right now, I think that domestic class is probably done. All right, now let's talk a little bit about this roster, and then we're going to get back to recruiting here. We talked about it a little bit yesterday, and I wanted to uh, rehash this again. I don't know that we are giving enough love to the possibility of what Jaden Bradley is going to be able to do for the U of A. Um, I was <laughs> I was able to be at a practice, um, but uh, he's he's a little different. He's a little different athletically, the way he moves, the way how strong he is than any than any of the guards that uh, the Tommy Gun has had here to this point. Now, again, I'm not making him out like he's Mike Bibby or anything like that. But he has a dynamic athleticism factor as far as getting in the lane that there haven't really been guards like that here under Tommy Lloyd that have been able to do that. Yeah, I agree with you because we, we talk about Keisha Johnson, rightfully so, Caleb Love, rightfully so, but it's not like Jaden Riley's bad. I mean, he was really good in high school. Right. His numbers at Alabama weren't great, but he had that one hot streak before, before the shooting where he, he was starting right. for Alabama – who at that time was the best team in the country, and he was starting as a freshman, and then he got the distractions and all that. Um, he's a he's a very good defender. He gets to the lane. He draws contact. He's going to get to the line quite a bit, especially in this offense. Um, you know, it, it, to me, it wouldn't be a surprise at all if he winds up having – I don't want to say he's going to have a better year than Love or Johnson, but it wouldn't surprise me if he has a year where we're like, oh, okay, like where did that come from? Because – only because we weren't giving him enough attention in the preseason because he's he's good. And the point guard, the point guard spot is in a very, very nice little spot going forward here. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, Bet MGM. Bet MGM is always in the news, as you know. Now check it out. Uh, use bonus code PHNX. Place your first bet MGM sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app of at least $10, you will receive $200 instantly in additional winnings, regardless of your wager's outcome. Now, um, or check out the show notes for full details. If you want to bet on Arizona basketball this year or back the A and take Arizona to cover against USC, which Skier and I both like to have happen, check out BetMGM. You will thank us later. Now, let's hear from the great Shane Diefenbach with the disclaimer. Problem call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-N-Y or text HOPE-N-Y 467-369-NEW York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico, in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. All right, there we go. Um, Boog right here. Now let's get to some of these comments here because you guys are smarter than us. You're the ones that make the show go. Boog, Bradley had 83 shots at the rim last year. Kerr had 13. When did these 13 occur? Get it? You get it? Come on. That's oh, funny. Kerr. All right. I thought that was actually really funny. <laughs> and it was spontaneous. Um, all right. Let's talk about – that, thanks for the knowledge there, Boog. But uh, let's let's talk a little bit about what B-Cat says right here. Is Dream City Christian the new Oakland Soldiers for Arizona recruiting? I mean, I'm not going to go that far because Arizona was getting every five-star kid that it wanted from the Oakland Soldiers, uh, including the one Shear was wrong about, like Ivan Rab. But, um, even though they didn't get him. But Dream City Christian, yeah, that was a stupid one right there. But Shear, what do you think about that? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, there's a connection. It's in glendale or whatever so it's it's not that far and they're good like their roster is really good there's two more guys that they're gonna go after and akena lozi and uh taco fawez and i wouldn't be surprised if they offer both one's a big man one's a point guard um but that's just the way i mean if there's good players in the state they're gonna go after them. yeah they're recruiting in state right now and you know what Got to give Tommy Gunn a little bit of credit here as well. He's not waiting until they're seniors to recruit him now, Sheer. We like this. Yeah. I mean, in, in again, they don't have offers, but I think they'll get offers. But it, it's very clear. We saw with Cameron Holmes and Elijah Williams and all that. If they like someone at this point and he's 25 or 26, they're going to offer the kid. All right. Hopefully this comes back to bite me, but I don't think it will. Zoom Diallo is not coming here. Yeah, okay, so here's the deal with Zoom Diallo. It's wild. So on Monday, I hear, like, Washington thinks he's a lock for Washington. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Like you visit Washington, but then he doesn't commit. And then yesterday I hear, well, Washington might be third to Gonzaga still and now USC. And then I hear that the Arizona visits off. But again, if he hasn't decided by then, maybe he still takes it. I mean, it's the kid it just doesn't want to say no to anyone. And it's I, I love Zoom. He's a great kid. It's becoming a little ridiculous. I wouldn't be surprised if Arizona just says, you know what? We're good. We'll help you out here. Go to Gonzaga, USC, or Washington. We got to move on here. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. All right. Andre Veris, by the way, our, our buddy Andre Veris says, can you dive into why Coa Pete is probably a long shot? Never said he was a long shot. Don't put words in our mouth there, Andre. I know, I know you, but um, here, I mean, it's not a long shot, but it's going to, it's not going to be an easy recruitment and it's very easy. Why? First of all, he comes from a family that doesn't have the attachment to the state. All of the kids went outside of the state to obviously play a major of uh, college football. There's also, you're going to have to pay him because he can go anywhere he wants. Um, again, Arizona could get him, but that's not going to be an easy recruitment at all. I mean, I, I can't recall a five-star recruitment. That's easy. That's just not right. the way they're built. I think Arizona is very much in the picture. I don't know why Koa's family wants the money, they, you know, but they want the money. Um, and, and a lot of times what it is, it's a, it's a respect thing. It's like, look, I mean, we see what all these other kids around the country are getting. We're better than them. You're going to have to pay us and, and show us how much you value, me, you know, my son or whatever it is. And so that's what it is. Arizona is going to be able to pay Coa Pete and, and get up some nice NILs. Um, it may not be what other schools do, but it's probably going to be good enough. And, and I think Arizona has a, a very real shot of landing him. Sheer, when was the last time you went to Circle K? Uh, yesterday. That's what we like to hear right here. All right. Now, join the inner circle for free by downloading the Circle K app. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. Circle K greater than QT. Take my word for it. Check out Circle K right there. This is a big, big movement right here. The Circle K movement. Grant Oracle says hello right there, uh, Circle K. All right, Brad Rich, I'm finding myself extremely over Gonzaga. I think we all kind of are <laughs> at this point, but that, I mean, that, that was to be expected right there. You're going to go, they're going to go after many, many of the same kids right there, no matter how, because they're built the same way. Yeah. I mean, if the style of play is similar, they're going to go after the the same kids. It's not just Gonzaga. There's, there's other schools that are going to be on the list almost all the time when Arizona is, you can, it's the same with recruiting throughout the country. Like if there's a certain style of play and that player fits in it, you're going to see the same offer list over and over again. Right. Now, Robbie Don says, uh, when you uh, say you have to pay these players and families, how much NL are we talking about for the top guys? It's over a hundred K it's over six figures for the top guys right there. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? That's just, that's just kind of the way it is right there. Now a guy that probably uh, does, I don't know, has a massive NIL, but we're kind of, we're at that point where we're approaching it. We got to talk a little bit more Mount Crevis right here. Mount Crevis is, I was going over statistical projections the other day. I think he's going to be about eight and four, something like that. And I think he could, I think there's a very real chance that he leads the team in free throw attempts because he's going to get fouled every single time he gets the ball down low because of how methodical he is there, Skier. Uh, he's not going to lead the team in free throw attempts, but <laughs> he's, he, uh, yeah, I think Aiden, would you bet that on the BetMGM Sportsbook app? Yeah. You get, you get Crevis and I get the field. I'll take the field. No, you got to uh, choose one. You'll get that. I, I think. Honestly, I think there's a good – I think Kashaw Johnson will probably lead the team at free throw. All right, fine. Go with or the Jaden Bradley. Go ahead. Or Jaden Bradley. Uh, oh, Jaden Bradley, all right. Um, or Caleb Love. Or – no. <laughs> but um, – Basically, you don't believe that Crevis is going to shoot free throws this year. That's what you're saying. <laughs> I don't think he's going to lead the team. I think probably like – I could see him being fourth or fifth. I don't know if he would get the minutes to lead the team. Oh, he will. Uh, he's good. Like he's – you know, eight and four I think is legit. Um, Clearly, you know, we talk about hit and miss and – a lot of times you can tell early on if a kid's a hit, Crevis is a hit. Like it, it may not – it'll show up his freshman year. Uh, it may not show up like right away and all that, but like his sophomore year, he's going to be really good. Right. He's going to be really good. And on top of that, he's also – what I like about him is that he's probably not going to go off to the NBA because he just doesn't have that kind of frame. He doesn't have that kind of build to him right there, Sheer. Do you think I should have put him on my my preseason pack 12? You love uh, it. 
I mean, I don't know. On the newcomer team, you should put him on the newcomer team, though. No, we didn't. We didn't get a vote for the freshman. There's no vote for that preseason. Tony Clifton says Crevis is the tallest peak. You are correct on that one. Now, um, we're going to get to U our U of A football here in just a second, but we also need to talk about uh, this out of conference schedule. Um, I think we're pretty. I think we pretty much know now. Like we talked about yesterday, we know that there's going to be that seven man rotation that is pretty much set. Where you've got uh, you've got Jane Bradley, you got Kylan Boswell, you got Keisha Johnson, you got Umar Ballo, leader of men, um, Caleb Love, Pella Larson, and uh, then um, uh, Mount Crevis. I think there's probably room for that eighth one right there, which I think will probably be KJ Lewis. But that I think is going to be the rotation right there, Sheer. I think it's very rare that you go into a season knowing the rotation. I believe we know the rotation. Well, yeah, it's just a matter of like we we you look at it, who's who's left out, right? And, and look, you're gonna there's gonna be other guys that get minutes in, in the end of that rotation is is TBD, I, I guess we could say, and maybe it's a little deeper during the season, but eventually it's going to narrow and uh, I'm very curious because again like I when you look at it the team's really deep someone's going to be upset uh it, and and we're going to find out who that is yeah that's going to be interesting to see right there Keck you don't know anything about uh, Arizona basketball you're used to watching bad players for ASU right there all right now let's move over to some Arizona football this line is too big I'm going to say it right now um Take Arizona with the points against USC right here. I also, again, I don't have any uh, inside information on this, but I also do believe that Noah Fafita is going to start this week. Um, I say take Arizona with the points. Arizona is going to handle themselves very, very well there, Sheer. What is it up to? I, I think it it is what now on the BetMGM Sportsbook app. 21 and a half. I just 21 and a half. I love Arizona to cover that. A lot of points, man. That's it, right. it, it, because. USC also, like, it's very, I don't want to say it's easy, but it is easy to backdoor cover against USC also because right. they tend to let their foot off the gas. I, I would pick Arizona to cover there. This is a very interesting question that Boog asks right here. He says, um, now, uh, why is it that Flo gets pulled for coverage, but Maldonado doesn't? That Sheer, you and I have asked that a question of each other many, many times behind the scene. Why is that, my friend? Because... I don't know. <laughs> My guess is that they just like Maldonado at the end of the day, the other safeties like Isaiah Taylor, when he's played has been decent, but inconsistent. They like Maldonado against the run. He's actually not awful against the run. I I don't know. I, I think that one of the mistakes against Washington was um, not playing flow more like flow, having five snaps and Tay Brown having three when Tay Brown has shown and like his 10 snaps all season, he can't cover. That makes no sense to me. Yes. All right. Now we got to talk about the, uh, we got to talk about Keona Wilhite a little bit. Obviously uh, the heavy uh, rumors are that he's going to go to Washington. I'm just going to say right now, I don't believe this recruitment is over by any means. Um, all I'm going to say is this, it's easy to look at the, uh, it's easy to look at the shiny, uh, the shiny object in the room and say, you know, I, I'd like to go look at that. But it's also it's also harder to pull the trigger at the end of the day and then leave Tucson. Again, it could happen, certainly could happen, but uh, Arizona, I believe, is still very much in this. Yeah, I'm not even sure, even if he commits to Washington in the next two weeks, that it's over. I, I think he is absolutely a signing day type of deal. This is very new to him. This isn't a normal four-star guy where they get attention for years. It's very new. Washington is a is a nice school, Big Ten, all that. Um, you know, they're telling them, they're showing them their edge rushers and things like that, and it looks pretty, and they're going to pay him. And but at the end of the day, Arizona is going to stay on it, and and I don't think we until he signs, it's not over. Yes, it's not over. And again, the big thing is the Jed Fish is going to continue to recruit him as he should because, again, Jed Fish understands this entire thing. All right. Now, Genesis Smith, this is the one that is interesting to me. Book says, I would like to see, I would like to see a little bit more of Genesis Smith. If you're going to go with guys that are struggling in coverage, why not go with Genesis Smith, who's at least younger there, Jason Shear? I mean, he played quite a bit last game in that dollar package. We need and more. I, I assume they're going to go dollar again against USC. Uh, which I don't know if I'm fond of. Um, but, I, yeah, I mean, I like – to me, I, I'm of the belief that Genesis should be getting the Jacob Manu treatment, which is you throw him out there, and if he makes a few mistakes, so be it. 
you know that he's going to only get better from it, and then you're starting him for the next three years or whatever it is. As Jed Fish talks about with quarterbacks throwing interceptions, a learning experience there, Jason Shear. Agreed? Yeah. I mean, he's going to make mistakes. He, he's already made mistakes. He's, he's I love, again, Genesis is really good. He's shown that he's not a great tackler. He's missed some tackles, but at the end of the day, you learn from it, you move on, and, and next year he'll be better for it. Yeah, you're going to be better for it for sure. All right, now, on the defensive line, this to me is going to be the key of the game right here because you're going to have to be able to get to Caleb Williams. I think I think the DBs for Arizona have been solid. I mean, corners have been okay. Um, but this is going to be a game where Taylor Upshaw's got to be able to get after the quarterback. And not only does he need to be able to get after the quarterback, you got to have somebody else that needs to help him as well. You're going to have to have somebody, maybe a Isaiah Ward, maybe a, I don't know who that is, but Arizona's got to be able to harass him to a certain extent. Otherwise, he's going to score a touchdown on every single play. I'm not sure I've seen, I would, I would have to really think about it. There's been better running quarterbacks. I don't, I don't even consider Kelly Williams to be a running quarterback. Right. But in the pocket, his mobility and an ability to throw on the run or moving around in the pocket is just stupid. I mean, it's just in Colorado had him dead to rights multiple times. And then his touchdowns came when the play broke down. That's the key for Arizona is when the play breaks down, you better have already gotten to Caleb Williams or really, really pressured him like to the point where he just can't make the throw because that's where he succeeds. Um, He's just good. Like his numbers, the last two years are just absolutely ridiculous, completely different threat than Michael Penix. You have to put pressure on him, but you have to get to him. The pressure is not enough. You have to hit Caleb Williams. Are you going with Arizona to cover? Yeah. I mean, and I, I don't think Arizona is going to win. I think, I think that USC offense is ridiculous. And I actually, I don't like the fact that everyone's talking about how bad USC is right now, even though they're undefeated, because I'm sure Lincoln Riley's using that, but uh, I like Arizona to to be able to cover to probably uh, two touchdowns right now is probably where I'm leaning, like a 14 point loss. All right, now you might say to yourself, where could I uh, get some of these games? Fubo TV right here, my friends. Check it out. Watch all your favorite college football and the NFL with Fubo. Go to www.fubotv.com slash PHNX to sign up for 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. All kinds of stuff coming up. College football, NFL, US Open, you name it. They got it. Ryder Cup. I guess the Ryder Cup is coming up. One of Shear's favorite events. This is true, Shear, is it not? Love the Ryder Cup. Right. Okay. We all we all love the Ryder Cup right here. All right. I am going to be curious to see if Arizona can run the ball in this game. Um, it was a little bit, uh, it was kind of heavy, uh, hard sledding against Washington, but this does feel like a game that Arizona should be able to run the ball. I say give Jonah Coleman 15 to 18 carries, and I think he'll get you an 80 to 90 yards right there against USC. I think you have to run the ball, and, and, and I think you have to be able to control the clock a little bit because you're trying to minimize USC's possessions, similar to what you did against Washington. My only worry is if USC gets up, does Jed Fish abandon the run? Uh, right. I, I don't like the strategy of just going out there and throwing. I know USC's secondary isn't very good, but their defensive line hasn't been very good either. Run the ball, take some time off the clock, and really establish Jonah Coleman and DJ Williams. And Jonah Coleman is the kind of back that, and DJ Williams, that they get stronger as the game goes on. I know that's a cliche, but when they can get the ball and they can start running there in between the tackles, it becomes a little bit easier for them right there because they're both guys that after about seven or eight carries, you see a little bit more burst. You see a little bit more of an uh, an understanding of what they're trying to do out there, Skier. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's... I, and that's what makes Coleman dangerous. And, and I think you're, we're going to see him a lot in the passing game too. Like I'm, I'm assuming Fafita started. It's just easy to assume that um, right now. And, and if you that's said you game, would start Fafita too, by the way. You said you feel more comfortable with Fafita out there. This is true. Yeah, that's fine. Fafita's weird. I feel more comfortable. I, I think the holy crap uh, factor is bigger with Jaden Delora in the sense where he could throw a 60-yard pass or a 60-yard pick six. Uh, Noah, right. you know, I, I mean, the, the only issue is like with Noah, you, Arizona has to put up points like they have to, and Noah's going to have to be able to complete passes down the field. He was zero for five against UW. He can't be zero for five against USC. He has to be able to throw the ball downfield against them. 
He's got to be able to throw the ball. And I think, honestly, and I was talking with Lamont a little bit about this, I think it's fair to say that they will because you got to remember as well that this was his first this was his first full week as the number one. I think you're probably trying to th- play things close to the vest. This is the week, though, that you open it up, though, against USC there, Sheer. I think that's going to happen right there. And Brendan Carroll said that, too, like when discussing the Washington game. He said, look, we tried to ease Noah into it. Um, if Noah's a starter against USC, we're not easing anyone. Like we're we're just going and attacking USC from the start. You have to because USC's offense is too good. You're you're basically asking for it if you start off slow and try to make Noah comfortable. And you shouldn't have to do that. If Noah's good enough, he's going to be comfortable. It's in front of his friends and family. There's going to be a lot of SoCal kids rooting for Arizona in this matchup. At what point do people start to realize that uh, uh, T Mac is one of the five best wide receivers in the entire country? I just Saturday. Said Saturday. Mm-hmm. National team. Because, hey, you know, to, to, I, I love T Mac. How many games of Arizona's have been on national television this year? None. I think Mississippi, yeah. State, Mississippi, was Mississippi State, State on national State television? television? SEC Network. Right. It's yeah, a, fair enough. Well, that is national television then. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, this is their first ESPN game of the year. So we're both we're both at the stage where we think that this game will be the game where the college football world realizes that T Mac is one of the five best wide receivers in the entire country. Yeah, because I there's not he couldn't. <laughs> this is probably gonna be a clip. He couldn't do it in high school. Damani Jackson could not cover T Mac in high school. Like, feel free to look at the highlights if you're watching this. It, it could not be done. Uh, he can't cover him in college either. Like USC has an issue. I'm really curious if they put Christian Roland Wallace on T Mac. That's going to be fun. That is a clip right there, Jay, or uh, uh, Jacob Franklin. That will be our show clip for today. Um, all right, you got. We got a couple more minutes with Shear before he's got to sign off. Now, let's get a prediction from Jason Shear right now. Are you back in the A? Are you back in the A to a victory? Uh, no, I'm going to go. Let, let's let's go forty-two to thirty-one. Forty-two to thirty-one. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, let's go forty-two thirty-one. I'd be all right with that. And how does Noah play during that game? I think Noah plays pretty well. Let's go. Uh, we'll go uh, about 275, three touchdowns, one pick. All right. All right, Sheer. Best of luck. To, uh, best of luck. Uh, keep us in the loop on everything going on. Appreciate your time, my guy. Thanks, Mac. I appreciate it. All right. Back the A. Come back with it. All right. Well, we're still here. That was my radio coming in. All right. Here's the deal, though, with this Arizona SC game. This is a big time opportunity right now. By the way, T Max, fine. Um, this is a big time opportunity for the U of A right here to kind of put yourself on the map to a certain extent. You're three and two right now on the season, and you let's be honest here, you probably have some wins that you probably or you probably have some games that you should have gotten some wins that you didn't. Um, Mississippi State, you probably should have won that game right there. I think it's fair to say at this point. But Arizona still does have a lot of talent, and that's why I brought up the T Mac part right there because T Mac is. T Mac's one of the five best wide receivers in the country. And I don't care what anybody says, he is. And like Sheer just said, there's nobody on SC that can cover him. Uh, he killed Damani Jackson in high school, and I would expect him to be able to do that one again. This is the game where Arizona and Jed Fish should be able to at least start showing people to a certain extent what Arizona football is about. Plus, there's going to be a lot of recruits that are rooting for Arizona. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But First, P- never, no better time to become a PHNX diehard. Go to gophnx.com. Check it out. You can get merchandise. Uh, you can get uh, access to the Discord chats. You can get all kinds of different things right there. PHNX, again, uh, Anthony Jamino is here now writing as well, making us look good. So, again, become a diehard today. Go to gophnx.com. Now, as far as Noah Fafita goes, I got int- – I got uh, – I think Noah's going to play very well. I really do. I think Noah, if Noah's starting, I think Noah's going to be something like 25 of 34 for 270, couple touchdowns, maybe a pick. But I think the offense is going to hum in a much, much better way than it has uh, under than it has under uh, um, Jaden Delora. And I think that's what Arizona fans saw. Against Washington, it wasn't like he was perfect, but Arizona, but you also got a sense there was a little bit of a rhyme and a reason towards the offense right there, where there really hasn't been that case in the past. Again, 
he doesn't have the greatest, uh, he doesn't have the greatest um, NFL prospects because he's shorter than me. And he actually is. Um, but he also has a big arm. He understands the game. And I think in college, I think height is somewhat overrated to a certain extent. And that I don't think he's going to have a bunch of passes batted down at the line of scrimmage. And not only do I not think he's going to have a lot of passes batted down at the line of scrimmage, I think you're going to see the wide receivers right there. I think you're going to see them actually kind of take what he's got and kind of buttress it, to be honest with you, because they all know him. All these wide receivers grew up with him. They all, like I said, and if you look at it, he's definitely the fan of the uh, players in the locker room right there because um, what's his, uh, you know, T-Mac, obviously, and then you look at, Ke I mean, Kevin Green, all these players, Key and Burnett, these are guys that I think if you were to ask them, and this is just me surmising right here, but if you were to ask them, I think that they would all prefer Noah Fafita be the starter. I think we are at the stage right now where Noah Fafita does need to be the starter, and I think that Arizona will be the better team for it because let's be honest here, Jane Delore has done some really good things at the U of A, but... I don't know that anybody watches Jaden Delora and says, man, that's going to, that guy's going to get a lot better. I think at this stage, you just kind of know that Jaden Delora is what he is. And you know, that's not great. That's not bad. That's just kind of the way that it is right there. And um, that's where we're kind of at right now with that. Now you might say to yourself, I'm going to the game because I will be up at the game right there. And I might be wearing some pins and aces attire right there. Pins and aces, the official golf apparel of, all city and uh, PHNX check out pins and aces.com and use code PHNX to receive 15% off your first order and get free shipping. That's pins and aces.com right there. All right, Keck, you're actually, Oh, two zone of Tucson 93. We win 38, 35. I could see Arizona winning this game. I know that uh, Shear said that he doesn't really give Arizona any chance of winning this game. I disagree with him. I think Arizona has a real chance of winning this game right there. Um, now, Keck, let's talk about our good friend. Oh, he wants this game more than anything, but USC has two, two as in T-O, it should be T-O-O, -O, my friend, horses on offense this week. His eyes are going to be the size of dinner plates walking into the Coliseum. Keck, not a fan of uh, spelling and punctuation, which is all right, but that's okay. Um, now, uh, Cosmic Contrarian, I think he just hit the nail on the head right there. JDL has achieved a ceiling. We know what JDL is, and... Last year, there was a lot of reason for optimism. This year, I mean, let's be honest here. He's been subpar. He has not been good enough to win games, and I think that's where I think fans are uh, at this point. Tony Clifton putting in a very, very good remark right there. Uh, Keck, an ASU grad, I would agree with this right there. Um, now, everybody out there, what do you guys all think right there? I think this game's going to be close. I really do. Now, if Dolores starts... I can see this game getting ahead or getting away from Arizona, mainly because I just don't see any continuity in the offense. And not only do I not see any con continuity in the offense, I also just kind of think that they're going to be running around right there. And it's probably not going to be an ideal situation for the cats. But again, I am going to, well, you know what? I am going to save my prediction for Friday right there, my friends, because I will be in LA at that point right there, getting ready for everything. Now, if you want to go watch the game somewhere, get some really good grub, go to Illegal Pete's. It's your go-to spot this summer. Stop by for happy hour, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. every day at all 12 locations. Illegal Pete's, the go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer for 28 years. I've been to Illegal Pete's many times. Illegal Pete's is very, very good. You can go up to uh, Phoenix, maybe see Keck, or you can uh, come down here in the U of A. Check it out as well, Illegal Pete's. All right. Now, we went through a bunch of Arizona basketball recruiting. We got Matt Muehlbach coming on tomorrow. Mr. Triple Double himself to talk some Arizona basketball. Then Friday, we have a special USC insider. Then Saturday, Ben White and myself are going to be live and on uh, assignment from USC. But on that note, going to sign off right now. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Full show with Matt Muehlbach. For the great Jacob Franklin behind the scenes, everybody on there, appreciate you all. Jason Shear, I'm Mike Luke. You've been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. Mm -hmm.